Welcome fifth grade social studies scholars to another Passport to Social Studies video. My name is Mr. Giordano and I will be your teacher for today. Today we will continue with Unit 3, a United States case study, in our Day 9 through 10 lesson. The topic of this lesson is Manifest Destiny, the Frontier and Westward Expansion. Our focus question is how have forces and events in United States history led to growth and transformation of the nation? Our learning objective is to evaluate the reliability of primary and secondary sources and analyze key events and people related to westward expansion. Today, you will continue to consider the importance of perspective and point of view in assessing historical events and evaluating the reliability of historical documents. You will be using the skill of collaboration to read a document from a historian named Frederick Jackson Turner and working to collaborate his interpretation of events by examining westward expansion from other perspectives. We will review the historical thinking skill of collaboration and will conduct a think aloud as we read the background information on Frederick Jackson Turner aloud. So let's get started. Doing history means searching for an understanding of the past. To do this, historians use primary and secondary source documents to look closely at historical events, whether specific events like the Trail of Tears or larger events such as westward expansion. Historians use evidence from documents that represent different viewpoints or perspectives. When different perspectives agree on some facts, that is cooperation. Cooperation means to confirm something or to give evidence-based support for an idea. Historians know that the way history is told depends on who is telling it, on their perspective. Because of this, historians seek reliable sources, that is, sources that agree on the basic facts. Source is reliable when it is dependable, accurate, and believable, and can be trusted. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this idea of cooperation. So again, to review, what is cooperation? Well, cooperation is the act of comparing pieces of evidence and seeing where they agree and where they might disagree. When there are multiple sources that say the same thing, you can produce a stronger argument. When you only have one perspective on, a, on an event, you risk that your argument might be incomplete or even wrong. Cooperation allows a reader to review how a document or material may or may not show that something else exists or is true. It is being able to identify how two things or groups rely on one another and how they may or may not be connected. So how do you do this? Well, when cooperating two documents or materials, or even more than two, a reader may find that the sources agree on the topic being discussed and it verifies a big idea. This could help the reader draw a new conclusion about the topic being studied. However, the two documents or materials could also disagree on the topic being discussed and provide insight into an opposite or alternate point of view. The reader should also consider if the documents or materials being studied are reliable and trustworthy. To consider if something is reliable, we can look at the source information, including the date and author of the document in connection with the time period being reviewed to make sure that it makes sense and that it lines up with the period being reviewed and the date of the document, ensuring that it's happening at the same time. A reader can also try to identify a bias that the author may have. A bias is a prejudice in favor of one thing over another. This can allow a reader to consider if the document is able to be believed or likely to be true or correct. So who cooperates? Well, we all do, whether it be a detective interviewing their various witnesses to a crime to see if their stories match up, a lawyer reviewing different pieces of evidence to present to a court to make a case to a jury, whether it be a doctor looking at various pieces of scientific evidence such as MRIs, x-rays, or a person's medical records to come to a diagnosis on a person's illness and what the next steps may be for this individual's treatment. It could also be an architect or a contractor who is working on a home or building, looking at different pieces of evidence such as records about the home or the area, looking at different measurements mathematically to come to a conclusion on how to build the building itself or how to construct or design something new. 
And of course, students doing work in various classes, being able to come up with arguments and look at various pieces of evidence to come up with a new conclusion to present as your thesis. In some way, shape, or form, we all corroborate information on an everyday basis. So what is collaboration? Let's dive deeper into some questions that you can ask yourself. Here are some questions that you can review as you're looking to collaborate different sources, materials, and other documents. You can ask yourself, what do other documents or materials say? Do the documents support one another? If so, how? If not, what do they disagree on? What are the big ideas from these documents? What are other possible documents or materials related to this topic? And what documents or materials are the most reliable? Some sentence starters for when you are collaborating and discussing this in your writing or even in your speaking, you can say things such as the author agrees or disagrees with, these documents all agree or disagree about, and another document to consider might be. When you master the skill of cooperation, you will be able to do these two important things. You will be able to establish what is probable or likely by comparing documents to each other. And you'll be able to recognize disparities or differences between various accounts of an event or even of a time period. Today, you are going to read a document from a historian who wrote 100 years ago. His name is Frederick Jackson Turner, and he wrote about the West as a frontier, a place where American civilization meets the uncivilized world, where the Indians lived and wild animals roamed. You will read his statements and then try to corroborate his interpretation of events by examining westward expansion from other perspectives. In your activity, you're going to follow these three steps. You can pause the video now to review the steps on your own.